How do you feel about those days when you were heavily using drugs? I mean, that, that period of time was uh, uh, socially, uh, the whole thing about drugs and the whole thing about, uh, I mean, when you think about Timothy Leary, this Harvard professor, you know, talking about LSD and that it's okay and, you know, and people are smoking pot even though they're going to jail for, for their life. Uh, there was uh, that that the, the drug thing, and then of course the politics and and the Vietnam War, and there was so much going on. And it wasn't until the last few years that that things got out of control. So if you look at the, the fact that, that that we're talking about maybe uh, three or four years when um, when the party was more important than the music, um, and uh, you put that up against uh, 42 years. Um, it's such a small part of our lives, small part of our careers. It's. Uh, it was a difficult time personally for all of you. When, when the drugs take over, uh, it usually brings out the worst part of your personality, and uh, uh, at least it did in ours. And uh, so it, it didn't do the band any good. I mean, it was. It got to be really hard to sit there and, and talk about. Um, What's a good song, or or what you know? What should we do next creatively when you're arguing about um, what somebody said, your girlfriend said to this one's girlfriend, and it just all that that stupid stuff. Are you saying that the era you were in made it almost impossible to avoid drugs? Um, if you could sit in the first class of an, of a, of a seven forty seven and snort drugs, you know. And if somebody looked at you like there was something wrong, which never usually happened, you'd go, "What? Well, what are you looking at? There's nothing wrong here. I mean, this, you know, I mean, everybody on this plane is doing it. You know, it's it's that that kind of attitude. I mean, it was uh, it was it was party time. I mean, I, I remember uh, they, the 747s in first class uh, upstairs. They used to uh, on a lot of them had pianos. And there'd be stories about like uh, um, uh, Elton John being up there and having these parts. They would have a, everybody, you know, the bar would be open and he'd play songs. And and uh, it was a, it was a whole different a whole different era, you know, the, the, that whole party thing. And uh, um, again, we, we've said this many times, but the band uh, uh, were druggies dabbling in music. I mean. And uh, as opposed to musicians dabbling in drugs, and uh, and and we could tell we'd go in the studio uh, v right at the very end, and, and the music wasn't up to par, and uh, our shows were, weren't up to par. I mean, we'd listen back to the tapes, and and if it wasn't for the fact that most of the audience was pretty pretty done in as well, um, we, we wouldn't have got away with it. But you know, we were feeling inside. We knew we weren't playing as as good as we as we could, and we just let some of that let that other stuff uh, take over. And you and Stephen were compared to Mick Jagger and Keith Richards. Did that always sit comfortably with you? Well, I think that uh, in my you know deep inside it was a kind of a compliment. But I knew, but in in the bigger bigger sense, I was it really bothered me because it showed that, that um, people weren't listening to our music because our music really didn't sound like the Stones at all. Uh, well, you look like them. Not really. I mean, um, it's interesting because it's there. There are other similarities when you have uh, a songwriting team. You know, like a, a tag team match uh, like that, where uh, uh, you have to learn how to uh, work with somebody. Um, as artists and get over a lot of the personal personal things, the personality things, uh, to, to make it work. And I think that was uh, one, of the, one of the biggest uh, uh, hurdles we had to get over. We can and, laugh about it now, but was it all fun? I mean, that's, that's a part of it. Um, I don't know. Um, read about it in my book. <laughs> <laughs>